Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the Object 261. It's the Tier 10 Soviet SPG. It's located on the south spawn of Mines. And this one is under the command of the Baseman from Hell. And uh, yes, he's about to uh, send a lot of the enemy to Hell because this is one of his favourite spawns. Game on! 18 centimeter howitzer. It's capable of doing 800 alpha, 45 millimeters of pen, and it's got a 9.5 meters burst radius with 11 and a half to 29 seconds of stun. And on top of all that, the standard reload is 30.68, but you can see Baseman's got it down to 25.95. Ready to go, and he's now watching the enemy. And uh, one of the enemies just made it in. We fired his first shot in. But unfortunately, he didn't get a hit on the LHMTD. Now, the Object 261 was designed. There were three versions of it. One of them had a 152mm gun in a closed casement. Another one had an open casement. And the third one, which is this one you see here, 2613, has an open 18cm howitzer. Based on the IS-7 hull. First strike! He gets one in and it hits the side of the turret on a 60 TP and it certainly hurts him. Okay, we're looking over all the map to see what's available. Now the thing is, the baseman knows that he can get hits on the enemy tanks. Uh, he's particularly good at this particular map and he knows any tank that goes into the hill is more than likely he's going to claim it. He's going to kill it. It's very, very dangerous to go into the castle, go through those gates, and you're going through the gates of hell. 291 hit points, and he got stun assist. Massive stun assist off that Lerba. Oh, he really took some hits. Tier 10 game with tier 8 tanks in it. He's not the only RT on his team. There's also an FV-3805, and he's just a short distance away. The enemy team's got a batch out 155-58 and a 5555. Oh, that was a direct hit by the FV-3805. Now, he's got a fairly fast reload. It seems to me he might actually have the 6-inch gun rather than the top gun, 7.2. Okay, we've got a guard. He's right at the edge. He's likely to get struck. Rounds out. Direct hit and the first kill. And notice the way he moves to cover behind this rock face. Makes it very difficult for the enemy because the moment he fires, they think he's there, but he moves very, very quickly to get under that overhang. He does watch what happens to the shell, but he can move so quick He's under cover before they can do anything. And that's another hit and another kill. He's taken out the Lerber. In fact, it was a blind kill because he knew that the Lerber was there, but he fired the shell in and yes, it suddenly appeared as a wreck. So he's got two kills now. I think the enemy is starting to realize that the, the number are thinning out in the castle. Okay, G-Saw, 1008, both in armor. That's out. Oh, he's got another one. That's three. I did say, you know, he could kill anything that goes into the castle grounds. See, the enemy is starting to get a bit depleted, although they're keeping pace with us. He's styling him on G-Saw. He doesn't want to fire just yet. That does. And he actually fires the round in just after the FB-3805. And as a consequence, he gets a basic double tap. The FB-3805 benefited from stun assist there because his shell went in and then base bands went in directly afterwards. So he picked up a whopping great, well, 194 stun assist. But it, it all counts. It really does. Okay, Defender out on the Middle Island. Let's see what we could do. That was the FB-3805. Rouse out. 
direct hit, 298, which means again the FP3805 benefits from the stun assist because his shell went in and it didn't hit the target, but it did stun him. And you can see now that the FP3805 is doing virtually the same. He's moving to get within cover before um, the next shell goes out. Another direct hit, 60 TP again. And you can see the 60 TP is getting very fed up with this because he just fired at the gap and I think he was aiming for the FP3805. I think he's getting really annoyed. It's so funny when tank players get frustrated and they can't get a hit. That's a hit, that's a kill, that's a TVP, and he's out the game, and that's the fourth kill for Baseman. The wrecks are accumulating inside the castle grounds. I wouldn't give much chance for that LHM TV if he stays in there, he's gonna get wiped out. And the 60 TP's in a position where, well, we might be able to get around on him, but he might be looking to get around on us. He's just been hit again. Rounds out. Yes, another kill. The 60 TP is no more. Oh, he said, sorry, five. He's got five kills now. One short of getting a top gun. When things go like this, the base man could actually pick up Either a, well, a Radley's. He's still got eight rounds of the Stun HE a remaining. Still perfectly possible he could get a Pools Medal, but he'll just keep pumping those shells in until there's no enemy left within the castle grounds. He's ready. Now, where is that LHM TV? Well, there's the Jaeger, but where is the LHM TV? Is he in there? He might have popped out of the castle grounds, but just not been spotted. He is very low on hit points, though. He's a splash kill if we can get the shell near him. Well, we just saw Tracer coming from one of the enemy RT. And he's marked the ground where he thinks it's coming from. And Emil's now moved into the castle grounds. Okay, that makes him a target. He's actually fairly juicy. He's got lots of hit points that we can extract. We'll put him through the squeezer. Another RT fires, and he's over in that corner. Yep, we marked the spot. And the LHM TV is very close to the edge. He's on the south side. He just popped in to have a look. This man looking for a shot. He was looking for the escape route for that LHM TV. Fires around in, and he got him. That's a top gun. Splash kill, and look at that, the enemy RT is now trying to counter battery, but they can't, because he does the right thing, he watches to see what happens with the shell, and then he moves to cover, and the time they fight, it's too late, he's already in cover, oh, we just saw an Emil uh, go up on the enemy team, we're now starting to lose targets, we're, well, there's a Jaeger, he pumps around into the Jaeger, and picks up another 374 hit points and makes him a one shot. And you see, they're still trying and they're still failing because they can't hit that spot. Not unless they move and they're not moving. Now, there's a Waffenträger auf Panzer 4 somewhere behind that bush, I think. That's out. Now, he didn't stay to watch that one. We don't know if that would have hit or not. We can say that that Jaeger is certainly potential kill fodder. And Larry is sitting side onto us. Oh, and he dies to one of our teammates. The sharp future ball gets the kill, which is more of a pity because we could have taken that one. We're now going for the batch at 155.55. Oh, he got him as well. That's seven kills. There's only two enemy left. If he's going to get the Radleys, he's going to have to go some. Oh my God, what a great game.
superb. It's, it's just when everything hangs together in just the right order and you tear the enemy a new one. Okay, there's only one enemy left. It, unfortunately, it's the defender, the same one we hit earlier in the game. He's hiding. He's hiding where we can't get at him. So we're going to have to move if we want to get him to get that Radley's. Even the FB3805 saying, oh, I've got to move. But unfortunately, he goes down to one of our teammates. And that was a brilliant game. Absolutely superb. Here's the end of battle results. And that was a brilliant game by the base man from hell in the Object 261. He managed to get a first class tank. I thought it was going to be an ace, but not quite. He also managed to get a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 10. And he got a top gun for getting at least six kills. In fact, he got seven. One short of getting around the waters. And definitely over one third of the enemy team. His win eight from that game, 3,524 Super Unicum Standard. Let's have a look at team score. Well, the highest damage in the game turned out to be the 60 TP. First tank that he hit and also one of the tanks he took down. He managed to get a high caliber and 4,846 hit points of damage. Second highest was the Yeager, 3,361. And sadly, he could have been the Radley Waters winning um, metal but, um, tank because he actually was side on to us with only 28 hit points left and an easy kill for the base man. But sadly, the reload, um, he was beaten by uh, one of his own teammates who managed to slam a shell in to finish him off. And he missed out by only a few seconds from taking that kill. Third highest in the game turned out to be the base man. Yes, he managed 3,092 hit points of damage and was the highest scorer on his team. He was also the highest number of kills in the game. He got seven kills. Three kills went to the Shafu 204. He was the one I think who actually did get the kill on the Jaeger. It may have been him. And two kills went to the Hori 3 on his own team and to the Jaeger and the T55A on the enemy team. And when it came to base XP, it's actually the Barascu did the best, tier eight. And that's why, of course, he was getting extra XP for every shot that he fired that hit one of the higher tier opponents. 926 to him, 921 to the FB3805, who also picked up a Confederate in that game. And 888 went to the base man in his tier 10. He fired 16 rounds, so he still had four rounds spare at the end of the game. 10 direct hits on the enemy, none of them penetrated, but he did get 17 splash. 3,092 hit points of damage, all of it done at more than 300 meters. He damaged 11 of the enemy, killed 7, and he got 671 hit points of stun assist off 10 stuns. I guess if he'd had just a little bit more stun assist, I think that might have been the ace tanker. On a premium count, he actually made 56,022 credits, got a 40,000 bonus out of that, and 25 bonds for another mission achievement, and 1,332 experience points altogether. But really was a superb game and a good example of how Artie can dominate a battle and literally shred the enemy tanks. And he loves this uh, particular spawn. He thinks this one's great. And, and no doubt about it at all, he was clinically taking them apart. And any tank that went into those grounds was likely to get wiped out by him. And in fact, that's what actually happened. The only one who actually got close to the entrance of the castle was the Jaeger, but even he uh, was an easy target for that last shot. Uh, but sadly, we missed out. But uh, so much um, thanks so much to Baseman for sending in that replay. I always love watching ones like this because it's you almost feel like you're doing it yourself. And you're saying, yes, that's what I would do. That's what I would do. And yeah, when you see it like this, it's brilliant. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.